Chavan from ATM. Uh, so first of all, I would uh, like to thank all the organizers for uh, arranging such a nice workshop and for uh, giving me the opportunity to present here. So today I will talk about Schwinger effect and a uniformly accelerated observer. Firstly, I will start with some introduction and motivation for this work, and then I will discuss the Dirac modes with background electromagnetic field in the ringless space time, and, and then I will move to number density of the global vacuum, and then I will discuss the entanglement between the created particles, and at the end I will summarize my talk. So let us start with some introduction and motivation. So in this talk, I will talk about the field theoretic aspects of background electromagnetic field, in particular the number density and the logarithmic negativity between the particles created by Schwinger and Andre effect. So uh, uh, here our motive was to uh, study the quantum entanglement. So a very natural framework to study quantum entanglement is a system where pair creation can take place. So ex uh, one, uh, two of the example of that is the known ex one of them is the known extremal black hole space time whose near horizon limit is the ringless space time and the cosmological backgrounds. So uh, in the cosmological backgrounds, we have done a uh, done a work into uh, 2021 where we have uh, done the field uh, field quantization of fermionic field in with background electromagnetic field in d situs space time and we have computed various measures of quantum entanglement uh, for fermionic field. Uh, and here, our motivation uh, here, we are considering linear space time uh, with, uh, with background electromagnetic field for fermionic fields. And uh, the uh, metric for linear space time is given by this, where A is the acceleration parameter of the non inertial observer. Uh, so we know uh, there are uh, two. Uh, very well known phenomena known as Anur effect and the Schinger effect. So, on, uh, according to Anur effect, a uniformly accelerated detector moving in flat space time receives the Minkowski vacuum to be thermally populated. And whereas, according to Schinger effect, a sufficiently high background electric field leads to clear production. And this phenomenon is known as Schinger effect. So, uh, but in this work, we are considering magnetic field along with the electric field. So uh, uh, only uh, uh, only magnetic field can't do the pair production, but it it can affect the pair uh, pair production done done by background electric field. So earlier we have observed this thing for Minkowski space time, where we have quantized the scalar field uh, scalar field theory with background electromagnetic field in Minkowski space time, and we analyzed there that magnetic field and electric field was opposing each other. Magnetic field was unstabilizing the vacuum, whereas magnetic field was stabilizing the vacuum. Now, in this work, we want to see that how magnetic field will affect the pair creation from the perspective of a uniformly accelerated observer, and how uh, does it affect the quantum correlation between the particle and antiparticle pairs. So, uh, uh, our concern of doing this work is to quantize a fermionic field with background electromagnetic field in the ringless space time and further we want to see the effect of electromagnetic field on the number density of the minkowski vacuum and the quantum correlation between the particles and antiparticles in right and left wedge of the ringless space time so uh, let us first uh, let us see what is entanglement by taking an example uh, uh, entanglement are the known local correlation among various components of quantum system so here i am uh, i am explaining entanglement by taking a uh, uh, by taking an example of uh, example so uh, uh, we, uh, here i have taken a state shy which is a uh, which is a uh, superposition of two cats uh, in the first cat we have uh, we have uh, two uh, entries. The first entry corresponds to Alice and the second entry corresponds to Bob. Similarly, in the second cap, we have two entries. Uh, in, uh, in the second cat also, the first entry corresponds to Alice and second entry corresponds to Bob. So this is a composite state of Alice and Bob. Uh, if uh, an observer C wants to measure the spin of, uh, part, uh, spin of Alice and she, he or she observed that the spin of Alice is in up direction, then this, this whole state will collapse to the first cat and without doing any observation for the bob we have the information about his or her spin so uh, uh, so if the uh, if the observer found that the uh, spin is in, spin of alice is in up direction then uh, we we have the information that the uh, bob spin will be in down direction this kind of 
correlation between particles are known as quantum correlation and entanglement is one of such correlation and there are various measures measures to quantify entanglement logarithmic negativity is one of that measure which is a very good measure to quantify entanglement for a mixed state so uh, to quantify logarithmic negativity negativity first of all we have to define a uh, density matrix so here i have taken an example or uh, uh, example where we have taken uh, the uh, a bipartite system which is represented by a density matrix rho ab and for that the logarithmic negativity is defined as log of norm of partial transpose density matrix of rho ab okay so this is the definition of logarithmic negativity which is used to quantify entanglement so now let us discuss about uh fermionic modes so uh, in the very first step we started with uh, the action for uh, spinner quantum electrodynamics in curved space time which is given by this okay so here d mu is the gauge covariant derivative uh, derivative which is defined as del mu plus i q a mu plus gamma mu where a mu is the gauge field and gamma mu is the spinner connection okay and q is the charge of the uh, field in the second step we have write uh, we have uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, written the equation of motion uh, for psi that is given by i gamma mu d mu minus m psi equal to 0 and in the third step we have taken psi equal to e to the power ax by 2 psi tilde and uh, and on substituting this and such of psi we get, uh, we modified our equation of motion as this okay and in the uh, and next we have substituted psi tilde as uh, uh, e to the uh, as this uh, that is uh, psi tilde equal to uh, i e mu a gamma i del mu minus q a mu e to uh, e mu a gamma i plus m chi where e mu a are the tetrads and we have uh, uh, so that our equation of motion will be a uh, second order equation of motion okay that would be easier to solve okay in the fourth step we have chosen our answer as this we have chosen uh, our answer as a mu equal uh, answers of gauge field as a mu e to the uh, a mu equal to e to the power 2 ax by 2 0 comma 0 uh, comma b by uh, so this will give us non zero electric field and magnetic field uh, uh, that will be constant electric field and magnetic field and uh, on substituting this Uh, we uh, the equation uh, the second order differential equation would be like this and uh, here uh, we have chosen this case because uh, in in the uh, uh, as choosing this gauge will make the calculation easy because uh, in this equation you can see there are two terms which uh, which contains the product of gamma matrices one is gamma 1 gamma 0 and other is gamma 2 gamma 3 uh, so gamma 1 gamma 0 uh, and gamma 2 gamma 3 commutes each other so we have chosen our answer in such a way that only these two terms will appear in this equation uh, so that our calculation would be easy because they will have same eigen vectors next we have chosen our answer of chi like this where uh, uh, where uh, uh, epsilon s are the eigen vectors of this operator now uh, you can see this is the picture of uh, four ringer patches right left uh, uh, past and future now in the next step we will quantize our field on the right wedge and uh, and on left wedge okay so for right wedge we will have uh, two positive frequency incoming modes one is for hr minus and the other one is for ir minus likewise we will have we will have two negative frequency in modes one for hr minus and other for cri minus okay uh, and uh, okay so there will in total there will be four in modes Uh, but due to the uh, uh, spin uh, spin uh, two spins of the fermions we will have uh, total eight in modes and likewise we will have uh, of eight out modes for the right mets uh, uh, right batch that corresponds to hr plus and uh, ir plus so in the uh, firstly we have quantized our field on the right batch uh, for uh, cri minus and uh, for cri minus and hr minus Uh, we have these uh, uh, the form of chi was like this for uh, uh, for i r minus chi is given by this which is a function of u and uh, u h s epsilon s and these exponentials where u is the uh, 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 confluent hypergeometric function and h r the hermite polynomials and for h r minus h r minus in modes of particle we have uh, 
uh, l at uh, as uh, this h r minus as a function of l and h s where l is the generalized laguerre uh, function and h s uh, y is the harmite polynomials and the information of all the coefficient la like lambda nu and l are given here which are the function of charge electric field and magnetic field and mass of the field okay so now the full in modes uh, for particle and antiparticle are given by this so uh, these are the eight in eight uh, full in modes on the right wedge of the Rindler uh, Rindler space time. So likewise, we we can have eight out modes for right wedge of the uh, Rindler space time. So that are given by this. Now, uh, uh, so now in total we will have sixteen in uh, sixteen uh, modes for right wedge of, of the Rindler space time. Similarly, we can have uh, we can quantize the our field on the left batch, but formally the field uh, equations and their solutions are same on left and right wedges. So only difference between L and R wedge is that on the L wedge, the vector field L T points near the past, which implies the sign of the charge and the in and out mode labels have to be interchanged with respect to the uh, uh, values on the right region. So by using this formalism, we can uh, we can uh, just an, uh, analytically continue to have this um, uh, left wedge modes. And uh, finally, to find out the Bogolig of transformation between the uh, creation and annihilation operator uh, of incoming and outgoing modes of uh, lo these local wedges, that means the, by local wedges, I mean the right and left wedges, we have written down the, uh, 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 written down the field quantization of R wedge like this, where A's and B's are the annihilation and creation operator uh, for uh, uh, for uh, particle and antiparticles in right uh, right uh, wedge. And the uh, and by uh, and next we got these Bogolig of transformation between the uh, in modes and out modes of right wedge, and uh, by using the relation between the confluent hypergeometric functions and the uh, generalized Laguerre functions. And where alphas and betas are the uh, Bogolig of coefficients, and they are give, they are having this form. And using the orthonormality conditions of these modes, we can have the uh, relation between the uh, 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 Bogolig of transformation between the particle and antiparticle creation and annihilation operator uh, between the in modes and the out modes, and that are given by this. Now, using these Bogolig of transformation, uh, the, we find out that the number density for local vacuum is given by this and uh, beta mode square S, which is a function of omega by A, uh, E, E corresponds to electric field, the strength of electric field, B, which corresponds to the strength of magnetic field, and Q is the charge, and M is the mass of the mass, and where N, N is the uh, Landau level. And we find out that uh, when electric field is going to zero uh, or charge is going to zero, this uh, number density is going to zero. So whenever there is no electric field, there would be no pair creation for local wedge, uh, for this local vacuum. Okay? So there will be no pair creation if there will be no electric field. Okay. Now, uh, in the next step, we have constructed the global modes to cover the whole Minkowski space time. Uh, the Minkowski uh, vacuum state is, expects, uh, is expressed as an entangled state between the right and left wedges when it, uh, it is constructed uh, by the superposition of uh, uh, right and left wedge modes. And uh, we have constructed these uh, global modes, these four glo global modes. Okay, And then we have written down the field quantization in terms of these global modes where CIs and DIs are the annihilation and uh, creation operator for the global modes. And uh, we obtain the uh, the Bogolig of relation between the global and local in modes, and that is given by this. Now, again, by using the relation between the uh, Bogolig of transformation that we have obtained earlier for local in modes and out modes, we have uh, uh, by using that relation we have uh, obtained this final relation that is uh, between the global creation and annihilation operator and the a uh, local a uh, local out mode uh, out modes creation and annihilation operator okay so by using this uh, this relation we can uh, write down our global vacuum in terms of local out vacuum and that is given by this 
where here uh, uh, this uh, uh, here in this uh, quad partite states the first two entries correspond to ir plus and the second two entries corresponds to hl plus and in the uh, next step we constructed the uh, hilbert space h uh, by the tensor product of uh, this ir plus uh, 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 this these particles of uh, ir plus antiparticles of ir plus um, particles uh, particles of hl plus and antiparticles of hl minus and uh, in uh, and then we have uh, computed the spectra of pair creation in terms of number density that is given by this uh, capital m that is given by uh, this expression that is beta mod square e to the power 2 pi omega by a divided by 1 plus 2 pi omega by a uh, plus 1 by 1 plus 2 pi omega by a and we find out that uh, at uh, four q approaches to zero or e approaches to me zero that means whenever electric field is going to zero or charge is going to zero we uh, reproduces the usual fermionic spectra that is one by one plus uh, e to the power two pi omega by a and we have plotted the number density with respect to delta where delta is directly proportional to b by e and we find out that with uh, this variation is non non monotonic uh, non monotonic and it firstly increases with the increase in delta and then it is reaching to some uh, plateau and after that it, uh, it is monotonically de uh, de uh, decreasing with the increase in uh, delta with the increase in delta i mean with the increase in magnetic field because delta is directly proportional to magnetic field and with the decrease in delta i mean the, with the increase in electric field because delta is directly proportional to 1 by e okay and we find out that with the uh, at delta approaches to infinity that means electric field going to zero and magnetic field going to infinity uh, number density is, becomes independent of um, delta so uh, so that is independent of, of delta and there is some non zero value of number density at delta approaches to infinity uh, whereas next uh, uh, in the next uh, in the next thing we have cal calculated the logarithmic negativity between the particles and antiparticles on the right and left wedge uh, on the right and left wedge respectively and for that first of all we write, uh, we have defined the global vacuum uh, density that is rho global equal to 0 cat 1 and 0 bra 1 and um, to compute the uh, reduced density matrix of particle and antiparticle in the right and left wedge, we traced out all the other things and just uh, uh, we obtained this reduced density matrix for particle and antiparticle in the right and left wedge, and that is given by this. And for this reduced density matrix, we computed the logarithmic negativity, and this comes out to be like this, which is a function of acceleration of the non uh, non inertial observer and the uh, electric uh, and and the function of delta where delta is a function of electric field and magnetic field and for uh, we find out that with uh, with delta approaches to infinity uh, and e going uh, that means e going to zero electric field going to zero we, uh, the logarithmic negativity is equal to this which is some non zero value so and we have plotted the logarithmic negativity with this parameter delta and the, with the, uh, we find out this uh, that the behavior of no logarithmic negativity is non monotonic and it firstly decreases with the increase in delta that means it first decreases with the increase in magnetic field and then it is reaching to some plateau and after that it increases with the increase in uh, delta that means with the increase in magnetic field and for delta approaches to infinity logarithmic negativity becomes independent of delta and it is just a function of uh, a and omega and finally i will conclude uh, uh, conclude this work by giving some discussion uh, so i have solved the dirac equation in a closed form and computed its number density for the global vacuum and analyzed the quantum correlation between the created particles due to the uh, Schringer effect in the Dingler space time in terms of logarithmic negativity and we find out that the number density and logarithmic negativity depends upon the motion of the observer also and uh, since delta is directly proportional to b by e so b and e will act oppositely on number density as well as logarithmic negativity and we have plotted 
logarithmic negativity and number density with respect to delta. In our previous work, we have precisely showed that at large value of magnetic field, there is no pair creation. But here we have known zero number density and logarithmic neg negativity at large value of uh, magnetic field. Now this is this can be due to the known zero of uh, known zero acceleration of the Rindler observer, and we have shown uh, and the behavior of uh, number density and logarithmic negativity is non monotonic and this can be due to the disturbance of uh, uh, disturbance created by um, background magnetic field and the non zero acceleration of the uh, non inertial observer and further we want to uh, compute some standard measures of correlation like uh, entanglement negativity mutual information bell violation for mixed state obtained from the construction of initially entangled state of one or two fermionic field okay uh, thank you